The recent coup in Niger and the response of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, have raised significant questions about the organization's effectiveness and future. There is speculation on whether ECOWAS will take drastic measures, such as attacking Niger's presidential palace to reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum. However, such an action appears impractical. Instead, ECOWAS leaders might be compelled to negotiate with the junta currently in power in Niger, urging them to transfer power to a civilian government as soon as possible. Despite the ongoing turmoil, there is local support for the coup, with citizens expressing a desire for peace regardless of who governs. The perception of ECOWAS as a declining entity prompts the question of whether any effort can revive it. One potential revitalization effort is the implementation of a single currency, the ECO. This move is promoted as beneficial for all African nations within the region, although some believe it primarily serves ECOWAS's interests. While this initiative could rejuvenate the organization, there is skepticism about whether member nations will overlook ECOWAS's history of compliance with French directives. The imposition of economic sanctions has been particularly contentious. Many in Mali, for example, view these measures as unnecessary interference in their internal affairs. The sanctions, which restrict access to essential ports in Senegal and Ivory Coast, are seen as devastating, especially for landlocked countries like Mali that rely heavily on these ports for imports. Business owners describe the economic sanctions as suicidal, casting doubt on whether these countries will ever trust ECOWAS again. Amidst these challenges, ECOWAS is advancing with the launch of the ECO, a single currency aimed at fostering economic integration within the region. The endorsement of Nigeria, the largest economy in ECOWAS, has been pivotal for this initiative. The ECO aims to streamline trade processes, enhance monetary stability, and strengthen economic ties among the 15 member states. However, the past actions of ECOWAS, perceived by some as overly influenced by France, cast a shadow over this ambitious plan. The introduction of the ECO currency represents a monumental step towards economic integration and stability in West Africa. This visionary initiative is more than just creating a new currency. It aims to lay the foundation for a unified and prosperous region. Economic integration involves reducing trade barriers and coordinating economic policies to foster collaboration. For West Africa, this translates to creating an environment where goods, services, and labor can move freely across borders, boosting economic activity and growth. A key motivation for the eco-currency is to simplify trade processes by eliminating the need for currency exchange. Currently, businesses operating across multiple West African countries face the challenge of dealing with different currencies which increases costs and complicates trade. A single currency would allow companies to price their products and services in one currency, reducing transaction costs and facilitating cross-border trade. Monetary stability is another crucial objective. A unified currency can help stabilize prices and manage inflation more effectively across the region. This stability is essential for attracting foreign investment and fostering economic growth. The eco-currency is envisioned to be a stabilizing force, encouraging financial discipline among member states and promoting economic resilience. The introduction of the eco-currency by ECOWAS is a bold move towards achieving economic integration and stability in West Africa. While challenges and skepticism remain, particularly regarding the organization's past actions and external influences, the eco represents a significant opportunity for the region. By simplifying trade, reducing transaction costs, and enhancing monetary stability, the ECO has the potential to transform West Africa's economic landscape and pave the way for a more integrated and prosperous future. A primary objective of introducing the ECO currency is to stabilize exchange rates in West Africa, where many countries have experienced significant fluctuations leading to economic instability. By adopting a single currency, ECO West aims to create a stable economic environment making it easier for businesses to plan and invest with confidence. A stable currency can help control inflation, especially in countries where high inflation rates erode purchasing power and savings. The ECO, supported by a robust monetary policy framework, seeks to maintain price stability, ensuring inflation remains low and predictable. ECOWAS leaders believe that the ECO will drive economic growth and development in the region by simplifying trade and stabilizing the economy. A stable and unified currency is expected to create a more conducive environment for investment.
When businesses face fewer hurdles and more predictable economic conditions, they are more likely to invest in new projects and expand operations, leading to job creation and economic growth. Moreover, the ECO is envisioned to attract foreign direct investment, FDI. Investors often seek stable and integrated markets where they can operate efficiently. A single currency area in West Africa would present such an opportunity, making the region more attractive to international investors. Increased FDI can bring in not only capital, but also technology and expertise, further boosting economic development. One practical benefit of a single currency is the reduction of bureaucratic delays at borders. Currently, exporting and importing goods in West Africa can be cumbersome due to varying customs regulations and currency exchanges. A single currency would streamline these processes, making it easier and faster to move goods across borders. This reduction in delays can significantly benefit businesses, particularly small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, which often lack the resources to navigate complex trade procedures. By simplifying the process, the ECO would enable these businesses to expand their markets and grow, contributing to overall economic development. Beyond economic benefits, the ECO currency also serves as a powerful symbol of unity for West Africa. The region, with its rich history and diverse cultures, has faced challenges such as political instability and economic fragmentation. A single currency represents a commitment to overcoming these challenges and working together towards a shared future. The process of creating the ECO involves extensive collaboration among ECOWAS member states, fostering a sense of solidarity and mutual trust essential for achieving broader regional goals. The ECO is not just a financial tool, but a manifestation of the region's collective aspiration for peace, stability, and prosperity. However, it is crucial to note that the ECO's success and its role in fostering unity are not guaranteed. The journey towards economic integration is complex, and the region must navigate various political and economic challenges. The ECO is intended for use by all 15 ECOWAS member states, including Benin, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, Côte d'Ivoire, The Gambia, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. These countries have diverse economic profiles, ranging from relatively large and diversified economies like Nigeria to smaller, more fragile economies like those of Liberia and Sierra Leone. The eco-currency represents a significant step towards economic integration and stability in West Africa. By stabilizing exchange rates, controlling inflation, simplifying trade processes, and attracting FDI, the ECO has the potential to transform the region's economic landscape. Moreover, it symbolizes a commitment to unity and collaboration among ECOWAS member states. Nigeria, as the largest economy in the region, plays a vital role in the adoption and implementation of the ECO currency. Its endorsement is crucial because Nigeria's economic activities significantly impact the region's overall economic health. With substantial oil revenues and a diversified economy, Nigeria's support lends credibility and stability to the currency. This commitment from Nigeria underscores its leadership within ECOWAS and its investment in regional economic integration. The readiness of member states to adopt the ECO varies. Countries like Côte d'Ivoire and Senegal which have relatively stable economies and are part of the West African Economic and Monetary Union, WAIMU, may find the transition smoother. These countries already use the CFA franc, which is pegged to the euro, providing a stable monetary environment. Conversely, countries like Liberia and Sierra Leone, which have faced significant economic challenges, may find the transition more complex. These nations must meet the convergence criteria set by ECOWAS including maintaining low inflation rates, fiscal discipline, and stable exchange rates. Meeting these criteria is essential for the successful adoption of the ECO and ensuring that it benefits all member states. For smaller economies within ECOWAS, the adoption of the ECO presents both opportunities and challenges. On the positive side, a single currency can provide these countries with access to a larger, more stable economic environment, attracting investment, promoting trade, and stimulating economic growth. However, these smaller economies may face difficulties in adjusting to a new monetary framework. They will need to align their fiscal and monetary policies with those of the region, a complex and demanding process. 
Additionally, the loss of independent monetary policy can be a concern, as these countries will no longer be able to devalue their currency to gain a competitive advantage in international markets. Despite these challenges, the ECO offers significant benefits for all member states. A single currency can reduce transaction costs, particularly beneficial for businesses engaged in cross-border trade. This reduction in costs can lead to lower prices for consumers and increased profitability for businesses. Moreover, the ECO can enhance price transparency across the region. With a single currency, consumers and businesses can easily compare prices of goods and services in different countries, promoting competition and efficiency. This can lead to better market outcomes and improved economic welfare for the population. The introduction of the ECHO is not without its challenges. One of the most significant is achieving macroeconomic convergence among the member states. Macroeconomic convergence refers to the alignment of key economic indicators, such as inflation rates, budget deficits, and public debt levels. For a single currency to function effectively, the economies of the member states need to be similar in these respects. Currently, there is considerable variation in the economic conditions of ECOWAS member states. Countries like Nigeria and Ghana have relatively strong and diverse economies, while others, such as Liberia and Sierra Leone, struggle with economic instability and high levels of public debt. Aligning these disparate economies requires significant policy coordination and discipline. Member states must implement measures to control inflation, reduce budget deficits, and manage public debt. This process can be politically and economically challenging, often requiring austerity measures and structural reforms that may be unpopular domestically. A significant challenge for the success of the eco-currency is the establishment of robust institutions to manage and oversee it. A successful single currency requires strong institutions, including a regional central bank with the authority and expertise to implement effective monetary policy. Building such institutions demands time, resources, and a commitment from all member states. The regional central bank must be independent and capable of making decisions that benefit the entire region rather than individual member states, requiring a high level of trust and cooperation, which can be challenging to achieve. Additionally, the central bank must be staffed with experts who possess the necessary skills and experience to manage a complex monetary union, necessitating investments in education and training to develop a qualified, professional pool. Skepticism about the ECO arises from concerns over the potential loss of monetary policy autonomy for member states. By adopting a single currency, countries cede control over their national monetary policies to a regional central bank losing tools like currency devaluation to manage their economies. This loss of control can be particularly troubling for countries that rely on devaluation to boost exports or those facing asymmetric economic shocks, where disturbances affect some member states more than others. Ensuring that the regional central bank can respond effectively to such shocks is a critical challenge. The political and economic diversity of ECOWAS member states adds another layer of complexity to the ECO's introduction. The region includes countries with varied political systems, from stable democracies to nations with histories of political instability and conflict, making consensus and cooperation difficult. Economic heterogeneity also poses significant challenges, as some member states have relatively advanced economies, while others rely heavily on agriculture or natural resources and face significant development challenges. These differences mean that the benefits and costs of adopting a single currency will vary across the region, requiring careful policy design and implementation to ensure all member states perceive the ECO as beneficial. Gaining the trust and confidence of the public is crucial for the ECO's success. Public perception and acceptance are essential for a smooth transition to a new currency. If people do not trust the ECO's stability and value, they may be reluctant to use it undermining the currency's credibility and effectiveness. Building public confidence involves extensive education and awareness campaigns to explain the ECO's benefits and implications. Governments and institutions must address concerns and misconceptions, such as fears of losing national sovereignty or potential economic disruption. Ensuring a smooth and transparent transition process can help build public trust and acceptance. The Eurozone's experience offers valuable lessons for ECOWAS in introducing the ECO, 
the Eurozone has faced challenges in maintaining economic stability and cohesion among diverse member states, dealing with issues like asymmetric shocks, fiscal imbalances, and the need for strong institutions. ECOWAS can learn from these lessons by ensuring a robust institutional framework and implementing policies to address potential economic disparities and shocks. Establishing mechanisms for fiscal transfers or financial assistance within the region can help mitigate the impact of economic shocks on individual member states. Maintaining high levels of policy coordination and cooperation is essential for the ECO's success. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have chosen not to participate in the ECO initiative, focusing instead on developing their own economic and security arrangements. Their political discontent with ECOWAS is a significant factor. These countries have faced political turmoil, including military coups and civil unrest, straining their relations with the regional bloc. ECOWAS has taken strong stances against military coups, often imposing sanctions and demanding the restoration of democratic governance, leading to friction and their decision to withdraw. These countries argue that ECOWAS policies are heavily influenced by external powers, particularly former colonial rulers in Western nations. They believe these influences undermine the sovereignty and independence of member states, imposing foreign agendas misaligned with their national interests. This perception has fueled their reluctance to fully commit to ECOWAS initiatives, including the eco-currency. Economically, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger face distinct challenges that make adopting the eco less appealing. Mali, for instance, has ongoing conflict and instability, severely impacting its economy. Burkina Faso and Niger also grapple with security concerns and limited economic diversification. Adopting the eco requires meeting specific macroeconomic convergence criteria, including maintaining low inflation rates, fiscal discipline, and stable exchange rates. Given their current economic conditions, achieving these targets is particularly challenging. The costs and risks associated with transitioning to a new currency, coupled with the need for substantial economic reforms, make the adoption of the eco less attractive. In response to perceived marginalization within ECOWAS, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have formed the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. This new regional bloc aims to address their specific political, economic, and security needs, focusing on mutual defense and economic cooperation. The AES prioritizes regional security and stability over broader economic integration. By forming this alliance, these countries aim to exert greater control over their regional policies and reduce their dependence on ECOWAS and external influences. This strategic shift underscores their desire to chart an independent course aligned more closely with their national interests and regional realities. The creation of the eco currency by ECOWAS is seen by some as an attempt to exert greater control over West Africa. Critics argue that the organization has often acted under the influence of France, leading to skepticism about its motives. The formation of the AES by Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger highlights their dissatisfaction and desire for a different path. The success of the eco currency depends on building robust institutions and gaining public trust. If the public does not trust the stability and value of the eco, they may be reluctant to use it, undermining its credibility and effectiveness. Building public confidence involves extensive education and awareness campaigns to explain the benefits and implications of the eco. Governments and institutions must address concerns and misconceptions, ensuring a smooth and transparent transition process to build trust and acceptance. Ultimately, whether the ECO will bring unity and economic stability to West Africa remains uncertain. The challenges of political and economic heterogeneity, the need for robust institutions, and gaining public trust are significant hurdles. Thanks for watching till the end. If you like this video, please leave a like and a sub so more people can see this.